communities uh, in achieving participatory democracy. Because very often uh, elected people talk about it, uh, but it seems elusive after a while. And what you want to do is to make it a reality. And here I want to salute uh, TI India for something that has started here and I hope will become a brush fire around the world, although I'm not one to propose fires normally. <laughs> but in this case, these are the development packs which have been started um, in this country and which are now, I understand, in 42 uh, local <coughs> communities uh, working uh, with, uh, with local communities and really helping them not just to hold their elected people to account, but to help shape what the program will be based on the true needs that they feel they have. And of course, you, you know all about that. But I think this is something that TI India should export. And maybe you should get people to pay for it. It'd be a good source <laughs> of income. Uh, I, think, I think a fourth area that uh, has been very useful, and all of these, of course, are in combination, um, is assisting communities with their daily uh, interface with institutions that deny them their services or expect to receive uh, money uh, in order to deliver a good which is a public good. Uh, and, and here I think the start of the advisory uh, and legal support services which has now started here, which is really to uh, be a point where people can turn to if they've had a problem accessing a service, if they've been asked for a bribe in order to access such a <coughs> service, if they've been refused a service. And what we have found in using this in other parts of the world is that when you do, the important part is not just to do the actual assistance, uh, to help them to navigate the system, uh, which is very often when the door opens which was closed when they see somebody uh, dedicated by TI to accompany that person. But what it does is that it allows an institution like Transparency International to be able to count and see where the problems are. And if most of the problem comes from such a licensing authority, then you can turn over to that authority and see you got a problem and you should fix it. Uh, because here's evidence without, of course, protecting the anonymity, <coughs> the anonymity of the individual. And the, the other one, again, which, uh, as you know, has been started here is PAHO, which is, uh, again, another initiative of TI India uh, to help, I understand now about 8,000 people have been assisted uh, to use their right to demand uh, information from public officials. So there's a suite here of available um, activities that I think can be tremendously helpful in empowering people and in, in getting them to change the culture from accepting that corruption is a way of life to saying, no, we're going to do something about it. Mr. Bauer, you spoke about youth, and this really makes my heart vibrate very hard. Um, because, you know, young people are not our future, they're our present. They're here. And they are tremendously able to start a new generation of successive generations <coughs> of looking for just societies, for honest societies. And um, I think that it is possible to start what I'm calling YES, which is Youth for Ethical Societies, uh, as a grand movement. And there are many ways of mobilizing young people. Uh, they need support, they need encouragement, they need some mentoring, but then you get reverse mentoring, where suddenly <coughs> they start to mentor us. And um, I think the educational system, I think, is very interesting. And I hope that all of you will band together in supporting ethics in education, ethics in curriculum, from <coughs> kindergarten to postdoc, uh, in schools of engineering, not one hour of ethics somewhere, but built in so that those engineers, those MBAs, when they graduate, have a sense of what it is they can do in that new company that they will join or new government entity to do something uh, when they are faced with corruption. And